Welcome and thank you all for joining us today. We are happy to present today's webinar, Understanding Insurance, with our special guests from IVC. More on them to come in a few moments. Uh, before we begin today, a few notes on the GoToWebinar platform itself. On the webinar panel, this is the blue or orange flower icon on your screen, you'll see the handouts pane. Here you'll find today's presentation. There's also a questions pane where you can enter your questions for our panelists, and we do try to answer as many as we go. Following the webinar, please take a moment to complete the short survey to let us know your experience today. And tomorrow you will receive a recording of today's session by email. And with that, I will now introduce Laura Jones, our Executive Vice President and Chief Strategic Officer. Thank you, Laura. Thanks very much, Alexa, and welcome everyone um, to the 50-something webinar in our COVID, I think it's 52, uh, the 52nd uh, webinar in our COVID um, series. And this is the series of webinars that we've been putting on to help our members with um, anything to do with COVID. And today we're going to have a bit of a focus on insurance because we know that um, keeping costs low is a, a, a big, big priority for businesses at the best of times. And we're not in the best of times. And we are hearing a lot about insurance through our helpline. So we're really happy to have a special guest um, here today from the Insurance Bureau of Canada, who is lead on the commercial um, insurance file as well as the chief uh, strategy officer. I'm also joined by, um, as usual, my colleague uh, Corinne and Rachel and Brendan are um, in the house today also uh, to help us. And so we'll get going and um, we want to get to as many of your insurance questions as possible. So we'll um, just get going. We've got a, a little bit of, of stuff to do at the beginning, um, as usual, to bring you up to speed on the latest and greatest on um, COVID. And before I do that, especially for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, I'll just uh, let you know that you can find our information on our website and we keep our website very up to date, including using the questions that we get through these webinars to make sure that we've got uh, answers for you. Um, you can also phone our helpline at any time and we're always really, really happy to hear from you. So um, counselors like Brendan and Rachel are standing by across Canada and um, ready and uh, willing to help you with whatever you need. We like to start the webinars with a few uh, quotes. So um, I, Corinne pulled together some uh, this week and uh, I like the, in three words, I can sum everything I've learned um, in life, it goes on, which is kind of good inspiration. Um, and uh, just a chapter, not our whole story. I think we're finally seeing the light um, at the end of the tunnel, we're getting closer, um, not further away as we were a couple months ago where it seemed like there was a light, but somehow we weren't moving very fast towards it. Um, but this is a chapter and hopefully a chapter that we're very soon putting behind us. Um, and then there's um, uh, always uh, the nice thought that the storm will pass. And so um, you can't calm the storm, but you can control um, how you how you are um, in the storm. So a few quotes for inspiration and then a little bit of humor. Uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, feedback that uh, adding some humor is helpful. So again, I, I, I was saying to Corinne as we were talking about these um, cartoons, that I'm hoping that these cartoons feel very, very dated um, really soon. Um, I know in talking to friends and family in the US, this is already starting to feel um, like it's it's a bit dated and in the, in the rear view uh, mirror, my mother's in uh, Rochester, New York, and um, they're not wearing masks at the grocery store um, anymore there. And so, uh, but hopefully this will, this will feel dated. I think the second one we can all relate to, we're all sick and tired of the pandemic. I think we're all positive for that. And with that, I'm going to, brief introduction, I'm going to um, go to the next slide and just, um, we're, this is what the webinar is today, but I'm going to turn it over very quickly to my colleague, uh, Corinne, who is an expert in all things in Ottawa, and most of you know her very well by now, so I won't do a long introduction. Um, but um, Corinne's going to walk us through just a couple of new things, not too much new this week, uh, Corinne, but a few things that that people might want to know about that are pandemic related. And then Corinne will introduce our guest speaker and then we'll be back to do some questions. Absolutely, thank you, Laura. Hello everybody and welcome back uh, or welcome for the first time if you're joining us. Uh, just a few things before we jump into our special guest, we wanted to make sure you were aware of first and foremost is the Can Emergency Business Account. 
Uh, the deadline, if you've never applied for it before, the final deadline, it looks like it's going to be June 30th. I'm not so sure there's going to be a lot of movement on that date. I think they will shut it down. Uh, there are almost 880,000 businesses that have used the SIBA loan. Um, so there's not any that's trickling in only now in terms of new applications. So if you have not yet applied for it and you think you could use it, please do so before the end of June. If you're in the non-deferrable expense stream, uh, those are the ones that are not the payroll. They don't have enough payroll, for example, so they have to use the more complicated non-deferrable expense stream. Same thing, you have to at least apply by June 30th, but you'll have until July 14th to, to submit any documentation that you're going to have to submit in order to sort of provide proof that you have the $40,000 in non-deferrable expenses. Um, the other good news, however, finally, is that anybody who had been given a not successful in their application for an extension um, will now be contacted by the financial institution. As of June 3rd, or the financial institutions are starting to reach out to the folks who were told that their more information will be required and they're going to have to wait to sort of understand what and how to go through that process to do that. That's now up and running. So hopefully, if you're in that category, the, the, if your financial institution has contacted you, if not, and they will be very shortly. Calling them or EDC isn't going to speed it up for you. However, it's a good idea to let your bank know that you are on that list and waiting if you haven't heard from them. For that group only, there is a bit, for, a bit more time for you to go through the process of fixing your application. Um, if if it's, it has to do with your business number, for example, the business number didn't coincide with the business number that CRA had, you have until August 20th to still do that work. And if you're in the second category where you may actually have to requalify, but through a different sort of means, meaning maybe through the non deferred expense option, you're going to actually have until September to do all that. So, uh, and even into October to submit all your documentation. So there is time for those folks. So you don't have to worry if you're in that category, um, but uh, you should be hearing from your financial institution very soon. There is a lot of information up on the website, SIBA uh, uh, website, the link is there on the screen as well as in the handout that you can take a look. The other thing we wanted to make sure you were aware of is that the BCAP and more importantly, the HASCAP, which is the Highly Effective Sector Credit Availability Program, those programs have been extended till the end of the year. So you have an opportunity, should you still need some sort of financing, uh, those programs will continue to be available to businesses until December 31st, 2021. So that was also announced in the last week. Um, we also, of course, know that reopenings are continuing right across the country. We have in the appendix of the handout, if you're interested, uh, an updated table on where things sit across all the different uh, provinces. Some highlights though right now is that of course tomorrow Ontario is starting to reopen they're moving into their next stage this means outdoor dining will be allowed camping some small bit of retail at 15 percent but there's still no haircuts still no um, ability to go into a mall if they have a if they don't have a door to the external area uh, indoor gyms none of that is yet available Alberta moved to the next stage today. Um, so they are now allowing gyms to reopen for some activities. They have indoor dining to a certain level, up to six people per table, I believe. Casinos, museums are reopening. Retail is up to a third of their capacity. Uh, personal services, such as haircuts, are now open even for walk-ins. So they're much further ahead of Ontario, and they've moved into this new stage as of today. Also, since we last got together, if you've been to some of our previous ones, Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia have both announced their reopening plans. Uh, those are also in the appendix. So every province that we have a reopening plan for, you will find a summary of that reopening plan in the appendix of this, including now for Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia. The only province that hasn't gotten there yet is Manitoba. Of course, they're still dealing with um, some pretty serious outbreaks there. And so um, they're not quite at that stage yet. They're the only province left to announce a reopening plan. We will say also though that you just yesterday, the government did announce that mandatory hotel quarantines could be eliminated sometime in July. They're talking early July, if you're a returning Canadian or permanent resident and you're fully vaccinated. Just means that you're still gonna have to quarantine uh, at home until you've gotten a, a negative test on COVID. So instead of being two weeks, it could be two or three days until you get that uh, test results back. Um, but you don't, you're not going to have to quarantine in a hotel. So it's the first sort of indication of what happens if you are someone who is fully vaccinated in Canada. And that's sort of the first step, I guess, at trying to loosen things at the border. 
uh, but that won't happen until sometime in July. The rumor is early July, apparently. So, so that's where we're at. Um, those are the updates for now. Of course, we're happy to try to answer any other questions you might have. But we are going to now turn it over to our guest, Celeste Power. Um, Celeste has an extensive background in public affairs and public policy across all sectors. She is the Chief Strategy Officer as well. Um, and in that role, she leads the strategic planning development processes for IBC and focuses on putting priorities and initiatives that are pan-Canadian nature. But she also, um, probably more importantly for this purpose, is the uh, lead on the commercial insurance file at the Insurance Bureau of Canada. And we're very pleased to have Celeste join us today. So I'm going to turn it over to Celeste, who's going to provide a bit of an overview of what's going on, and then we'll get to all of your questions. Over to you, Celeste. Perfect. Thank you so much, Corrine, and thank you so much, uh, everyone, for having me here today. Um, as mentioned, I'm with Insurance Bureau of Canada. IBC is the National Association for Canada's Private Home, Auto, and Business Insurers. IBC's members represent about 90% of Canada property and casualty insurance market. Next slide. So thank you again to the CFIB. Um, oh, we're just still on the previous slide. There we go. Perfect. Thank you again to the CFIB for having us here today and for the strong partnership that we've had over the past year. I do believe our collaboration during this challenging time has been critical, not just with the pandemic, but also with the hard commercial insurance market. Prior to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, there were signs that the commercial insurance market globally was hardening. And essentially what that means is that the market is going through a correction and that insurance is essentially harder to find. Therefore, a hard market. I'll speak to how this happens in a few moments. And then, of course, while this was happening, COVID-19 hit, bringing with it significant challenges for Canada's economy, with small and medium-sized businesses bearing the brunt of the economic downturn. Like almost everything else, COVID-19 has exasperated the challenges in the commercial market. And unfortunately, the two combined led to even more stress for business owners. Next slide. Thanks. So how did we get here? How does a global insurance market correction happen at the same time as a pandemic is approaching? This is all due to what I've been calling an unfortunate but perfect storm of factors. Insurance essentially pools the premiums of the many to pay the claims of the few. Insurers also set their premiums looking forward, predicting very technically where they expect to pay out claims. However, over the past number of years, severe weather events have increased significantly, causing claims costs for businesses in Canada and around the world to skyrocket. This is one of the factors that has led to the market correction or the hard market that we are currently in. So to give you an idea of what I'm sort of increases I'm talking about here, consider this. Insured losses in 2016 due to weather uh, catastrophes hit $5.1 billion, the highest in Canadian history. The losses are part of an alarming trend. Between 2001 and 2010, there were 47 catastrophes. And just for your information, in the insurance world, we deem anything that's greater than $25 million in losses a catastrophe. So there were 47 of those between 2001 and 2010. In the past decade, however, we've seen 102 catastrophes. In dollars and cents, between 1983 and 2008, insured losses from weather catastrophes in Canada averaged about $400 million a year, but in the past decade, they averaged about $2 billion a year. Last year, in 2020, 2020 alone, losses totaled $2.4 billion, and over 30% of those claims were related to the commercial insurance losses. In addition to severe weather claims increasing, insurers also saw an increase in other claims areas across the commercial, commercial sector. And due to the increasing litigious environment in which we operate, those claims are costing more and more. This was coupled with a low interest environment, and as mentioned earlier, topped off with COVID-19, which has changed the risk environment significantly and quickly. Next slide. To put this all into context, I'll speak to the current risk profile for the hospitality sector, which has been one of the hardest hit sectors. Pre-pandemic, the market was already hardening because of an increasing risk profile. In addition to the factors I just mentioned, in the hospitality sector also saw a huge increase in liability claims. And at the beginning of the hard market, 
one large global insurer decided to write less of this business in Canada. This created a supply and demand problem. There are just as many businesses looking for insurance, but there are fewer insurance offerings available. Next slide. And as we know, COVID-19 has compounded the existing insurance industry challenges and creates a unique dynamic focused on affordability and availability. We have seen a worldwide suppression of economic activity in the interest of public safety measures. Many businesses like yours are on the front lines of that economic downturn. I wanted to provide you with this background, but I recognize that those factors do not change the outcome for you or your business today, which is what is needed most. I recognize how difficult it is to be a business owner. My dad is a small business owner, and I know that things are stressful even when times are good, let alone during a global pandemic and a hard commercial insurance market. Recognizing these challenges, the insurance industry is making every effort to help businesses during this difficult economic period. In 2020, the industry provided more than $2.4 billion in personal and commercial insurance relief to help Canadians impacted by the pandemic. Of that total, $805 million in relief and deferred premiums has been provided directly to businesses. Next slide. In addition, IBC and its member companies have implemented a comprehensive action plan to support its commercial clients and business owners during this challenging time. This work began before the pandemic as insurance challenges emerged in certain sectors like the condominium sector, mostly in Western Canada, and commercial trucking. While the challenges in Canada's commercial insurance market will not end overnight, the good news is they will end. Hard markets are corrections, and so once the market corrects, there will be more competition and more products and prices offered to you as a customer. I unfortunately don't have the crystal ball to predict when the hard market will end, but I can say that where we saw the hard market hit first in the condominium sector in Western Canada, we saw a great um, deal of uh, a significant increase in insurance availability and affordability there. We're hearing from brokers that it's easier for their condo corporations to find insurance now, when a year ago it was extremely difficult. So I think that's a sign of good things to come. In the meantime, however, IBC and its member companies have put in place a business insurance helpline. Any business owner facing insurance challenges can call 1-844-2-ASK-IBC to talk to an ex experienced insurance professional. And don't worry, we'll put that number up later as well. We also developed a business insurance help website that contains tips, support, and information for businesses. We hired a team of risk managers to work directly with brokers and consumers, and I'll speak more to that in a moment. We struck a national commercial insurance task force that brought together stakeholders from a number of sectors, including the CFIB, to better understand the challenges in those sectors and to provide a comprehensive list of recommendations to help these sectors improve over the long term. And in Ontario, where lockdowns have been in place for longer than anywhere else, we launched a business insurance action team for small restaurants, bars, lounges, and event halls facing insurance challenges. Next slide. Now, while, I, while you can call us individually to get individually tailored assistance for your business, I thought I'd share right now some of the tips that uh, we have seen to be helpful for businesses that call us. The first one sounds simple, but it's very important. It's shop around. While some global insurers have pulled back from the market, as I mentioned earlier, commercial insurance is still highly competitive in Canada. And so if you haven't done so, do explore your options. It is very possible another insurance company can provide a different coverage package at a lower rate. As business owners, you often see opportunities that your competitor may not believe is viable for their operations. Insurance is no different. Make sure your broker contacts a variety of insurance providers to understand what they can offer your business. Make sure your insurance broker has the most recent intelligence of who's offering insurance in the market or maybe who has withdrawn. The most important way to start this process is to work with a commercial insurance agent or broker who knows about your type of business and is willing to invest the time and effort to help you. In addition to shopping insurers, it is within your right to speak to bro different brokers and agents as well. Second, there is insurance capacity available in the market. And in some lines, like what we saw in condos out west, there's new capacity being added. While we have found that it is much more difficult to find affordable insurance now than it was previously, 
with a little extra work, help from your broker, agent, maybe IBC, there is insurance available out there. Um, so again, that's why shopping around is so important. Third, with your broker, definitely talk through a risk management strategy. Ensure your submission that goes to the insurance underwriter is complete, including citing previous loss history and risk mitigation taken um, in the meantime. I know that these risk management strategies can take a little extra time and be some extra work, but they do work. I saw one business that had a couple of previous claims and was really struggling to find insurance, but he had done all of the right things to make sure that those claims didn't happen again. He had an excellent risk management strategy in place. Unfortunately, however, his broker insurer didn't know about it. So once he did provide it to his broker, he was able to find insurance at a much more affordable rate. And fourth, talk to your bro broker about ways you can reduce your insurance costs. For example, insurers may be able to lower your premium if you increase your deductible or change your coverage limits. You do wanna think through that to see what kind of cash flow you would have and where you're comfortable putting that deductible. But again, that's something you can speak to with your insurance representative. If you are still having trouble finding available and affordable coverage, call IBC's Business Insurance Helpline. That, it is, that is exactly what we are here for. We have insurance experts and a team of risk managers that are ready and willing to help. Next slide. Speaking of risk management, IBC's team of risk managers specialize in identifying risks to your business and recommending preventative measures to minimize these risks, which impacts not only your short-term costs, but your long-term insurance costs as well. It's important to know that IBC's risk management service is provided at no charge to you, and it does not take a one-size-fits-all approach. We recognize that no two businesses are identical. Our risk managers can help in explain the insurance placement system in Canada and the best ways to find an insurance broker or agent that can meet your needs. In addition, they will outline the types of coverages and pricing you need to consider for your business in today's environment. They will also review your current policy and provide suggestions on how you, your broker or your agent can enhance your insurance placement goals. The first step to accessing our risk managers is to call our dedicated business insurance helpline. This service is available to help any business or organization, including not-for-profits, across the country. It is also, a, yes, and so it's available in every province right across the country. We're seeing success from this, which I do think is a good sign. Next slide. So again, while you can call and get personalized assistance from IBC's risk management team, I thought I'd just share a few tips uh, that our risk managers have provided along to us. These tips include separating low and high risk operations you may have into two uh, corporate entities, ensuring the underwriters, the insurance underwriters, know about actions you've taken to mitigate those risks, like the business I mentioned earlier, updating your revenues and figures um, related to liquor for current COVID-19 uh, period, update your business interruption limits prior year to reflect the current COVID-19 period decline. It could be possible that you're entitled to a refund. Also show your underwriter how your business model has pivoted from the previous year. Develop an alcohol policy summary for license establishment and consider the value appraisals as a tool for securing appropriate coverage limits. Again, this is something our risk managers would be happy to help you with if you give us a call. Next slide. Apologies, Celeste. It looks like we're just having a slight technical issue. If you're able to keep going um, or if we can jump to some questions, I'm just going to switch the screen over. Yeah, no problem. I can keep going without the slide. Um, so uh, to assist businesses even further, in November, IBC launched a new Business Insurance Action Team, or VAD, to help struggling small businesses in the hospitality sector um, secure insurance amid economic challenges. This initiative is focused on small restaurants, bars, taverns, banquet halls in Ontario, which has had the longest lockdowns of any sector in any province across the country. Working directly with brokers and businesses, a risk manager and a committee of insurers will assess and review eligible business applications to make loss prevention recommendations and help find coverage. A business would not be obligated to accept the quote provided by BIAT, and while we can't ensure that we can provide a quote to everyone, we have recently extended the program to make sure that we can help as many people as possible. So, depending on where you live, 
begin, the economy will begin to reopen in the coming days, weeks, and months. It's very exciting. It's also an important time to consider how to position your company best to succeed. I'm sure you're all looking at that now. And we're just on the next slide if our technical issues are. Uh, perfect, thank you. So while you're positioning your company in the best way to succeed now that we're reopening, um, a couple of questions you might wanna ask yourself as we look at that. You may ask yourself, do I have a robust risk management strategy in place? And if you do, definitely let your insurance representative let, you know, let them know. You might be wondering, how do I make sure I'm following public health guidelines? Well, the best place to do that is probably a public health authority, but it would be a good um, tip to let your insurance representative know all the things you're doing to keep your business and your customers safe. You may have heard that cyber threats and fraud have, are, are increasing. IBC can definitely help with that if you call our business insurance helpline. We can give you tips and information to make sure that you're protected from those threats. You might also be wondering, my policy renewal is coming up. How do I prepare for it? What can I do? Best advice is not to wait. Contact your broker early to just make sure there are no surprises. Next slide. I know I've provided a lot of information here today, and I do hope that it has been useful. We have seen success from the initiatives that I've talked about. Our business insurance helpline has assisted over 2,000 businesses across the country. Our risk managers have helped over 160 businesses since the beginning of the year. Our condo action team has helped 76 stratas and condo corporations. And in Ontario, our business insurance action team has worked on 84 files to date. While we haven't been able to place insurance in every specific case, we can concretely confirm we've helped 126 businesses find a path to insurance. Overall, we're averaging close to an 80% success rate in helping businesses find affordable insurance. And this work continues. As we head into reopening in certain parts of the country, we do want to make sure that we are here for those who need it most. Next slide. So I would encourage anyone experiencing challenges um, securing insurance to utilize these resources. Tell your other business friends about them. We are here to help. And um, we also have a dedicated website at businessinsurancehelp.ca, as you'll see on the screen. Lots of tips and resources there. And of course, you can contact our business insurance helpline uh, with the number on the screen here today. With that, um, I'll happily uh, pause there and uh, take any questions the uh, crowd might have. Well, thank you so much, Celeste, for that um, overview, and um, we'll get to uh, we'll get to uh, questions uh, now. But before we get to insurance questions, I just wanted to provide a little quick update. Um, Corinne Manitoba does uh, th thank you uh, very much to our, um, this is always why we have such a great uh, community here and they tell us where we're a little behind. So um, so uh, Kristen helped, uh, helped us uh, understand that Manitoba's got its reopening plan up now. So that's a, a major milestone for the country, actually. I think that's good news for everyone, no matter where you are, that every province has a reopening plan. And it looks like Manitoba's, um, they're tying theirs to vaccines, vaccination rates, which uh, not surprising, that's what most provinces are doing and uh, starting um, in uh, early July. Uh, so that's good news. And now let's turn to some of the um, insurance questions um, that we get. So I've got a couple here from members, but before I get to those, I, I think something that will probably be on everybody's mind, Celeste, is you know, how long do these hard markets typically last? And do you have any, I know if you could read the future, you'd be rich. So we're not asking you to be a fortune teller, but maybe your best guess about, um, you know, there are certain things like with the risk of COVID hopefully coming down with vaccines and we're seeing the numbers come down, that was one of the factors you talked about as driving insurance costs up um, earlier in your presentation. Do you have a sense of how long this hard market um, might uh, last? So this is the same question that I ask all of our insurance executives when I see them as well. So it is a hot topic question, a great question. And you're right, I don't have the answer to it. And if I did, I would, yes, likely be very, very rich. Um, but I will say, I think uh, COVID-19, you know, coming under control, vac vaccinations going up, reopenings happening, that will be a bit of a transition period. But I do think that overall, it will help the insurance situation that's facing many businesses once we get through that transition period. Hard markets previously, they've all varied. The last one we had was about 20 years ago. It was much shorter than this one, but they didn't have COVID-19 to it, you know, contend with. So I am hopeful that, um, you know, 
we won't see it too much further into 2022. Um, and we have seen signs of correction happening. As I mentioned, condos and stratas in 2019 were sort of the first hit by the condo or the hard commercial market. And now they're not seeing those struggles anymore. So I'm hoping that we'll hear more of those stories coming forward as we finish out, uh, out this year. And just a couple more general questions on the, the, the BIOT program. Is that only for Ontario or are you helping um, businesses across uh, Canada with that? So we, uh, the resources that I mentioned are Helpline, our risk managers, our website. Those are available for every province across the country. And actually most folks are helped by either our Helpline or our risk manager without having to go further. BIAT is only available right now to Ontario. And the reason BIAT's in place in Ontario is because we had seen the longest lockdowns and the, you know, very challenging activity here in this province. And that's an, a little extra support uh, for the hospitality sector here. Great. And then I expect you're probably going to get some more calls to your helpline. So one of the things we like to um, uh, let our members know about is, you know, how wait times, like what can they expect if they call your helpline? Are they going to um, um, go into a queue or is it like what, 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 kind of, um, what kind of experience are they going to get on the other end of that phone call? Yeah, that's a great question. So our um, business insurance helpline is actually managed by retired insurance executives. So, um, you know, either on the insurance company side or former brokers, former broker owners, they have a wealth of experience. And if you were to add up their years of experience and combine them, you'd be in the, you know, 200 range of years of experience. So really personable people, really eager to help. And they're really doing this because they have a passion for insurance, a passion for their customer. So we're really proud of that service. Right now, um, my understanding is there's no queue. Um, you can get to someone quite quickly, or you can um, email us or leave us a message and your, your call is returned very quickly as well. So there's not a huge wait time for folks. I hope that we see an influx of calls if people need the support, um, but for right now, um, it's a pretty available service. Okay, well, I think that's a great uh, tip if you're struggling with insurance. Um, why not give that a, a try? Um, Corinne, I'm going to go to you to, to um, I know we've got some specific member questions. And so I'll go you to pose some of those specific member questions uh, to Celeste. Sure. So, Celeste, uh, we have quite a few coming in. So, Angela wanted to know, uh, break and enter has increased substantially in Vancouver after COVID. Uh, because they had two claims, the insurance has threatened to deny them insurance. We have done everything the insurance asked us to secure the premise. We're getting punched from every side these days. So what can we do with insurance issues in this case? So what would yeah. you advise? Yeah, no, thanks, Angela. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and yeah, we have seen an increase of vandalism um, right across the country. Um, we find that when econo the economy goes down, uh, there's an increase in break and enters and vandalism, unfortunately, that goes up. From an insurance perspective, um, you know, claims do, claims do add to your insurance history and uh, it's something that people look at. Um, your insurance provider, um, you know, I would definitely talk to your broker or agent about shopping around to see if there are others there. Put in that loss mitigation strategy. Make sure they see every step you've taken to secure your premise, you know, to re respond um, to the, the requests made by the insurer. Um, and again, our business insurance helpline can also help you with kind of navigating, shopping around, um, which other brokers to call, um, who offers insurance in this space, uh, they can help you there. When I'm renewing my insurance, I often talk to those those folks and they can really help you navigate that. So definitely look to shop around and anything, any you know investment you've made to securing that property, make sure that everyone's well aware of it. Well, speaking of shopping around, um, Lynn is saying that uh, transportation companies have seen exceptionally high insurance premiums in the last year. Uh, especially logging trucks, even with shopping around to insurance, one truck and trailers over $50,000 per year. With these types of premiums, how can we, anyone be expected to keep their companies viable? So I think it's a bit of a comment more than, <laughs> but if you have anything to add to that, um, please feel free to do so. I'm sure it's not news to you. No, absolutely not. Unfortunately, um, that's correct. You know, commercial trucking has been something on our radar now for a number of years. Um, in you know increasing cost, but also the increased um, claims uh, that we're receiving as well. So with trucking, there is a facility association available. I'm sure Lynn is well aware of this, but it's just for the information of the others. There is a facility association available so that if you can't find insurance in the regular market, there is that sort of market of last resort there. 
Um, I do know that you know it's it's not exactly a a, a deal uh, to get into the facility association. You you are paying significantly for coverage. So to try to deal with some of those issues, we have been partnering with the Canadian Trucking Alliance, and we have been working through some recommendations that can help lower the claims costs and the costs in that environment. And IBC just recently struck a commercial trucking working group. And so I know this isn't helpful right now today, but we do have some great recommendations with the Canadian Trucking Alliance that we're bringing forward to governments, to regulators, um, you know, brokers and industry. So it is something we're working on. All right, so a bit of stay tuned on that one, but um, okay. I can go on, Laura, unless you wanted to. Uh... I have a few I can throw into, Corinne, and then I'll, I'll um, come back to you. So Nicole um, is saying that increases for HVAC and plumbing has gone up 100% as um, of the recent renewal, and they've been told by the broker that only one out of 12 responded. Um, but her question is, why has the increase happened and why so sharp? So that gets back to what's driving, you know, the hard market. Um, and I don't know if you have any additional comments on that, Celeste. Yeah, I don't have specific data about the HVAC and plumbing sector um, per se, uh, but I would suspect that the factors that I mentioned earlier probably combined with, um, you know, specific losses in that area are driving up the cost of premiums. Um, it is concerning to hear that only one of 12 insurers responded back. It might be a good question to ask um, the broker if they are, um, you know, if there are other insurers in the market that maybe they don't have access to, or maybe speak with another broker um, about accessing other insurers for, for more choice um, for the, the customer. Brandon. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Celeste. Um, first of all, I want to say what a great service that your helpline is. Um, I manage our Western Canadian Business Resources Department at CFIB, and, and on the whole, CFIB took about 90,000 calls from members last year, and I imagine at least 5,000 of those were business insurance related. So a few questions and things we're hearing on the phone, so not necessarily on this webinar, um, and they're tricky questions, so I don't necessarily expect you to have the answer to them. Um, the first, so we have a, a few members who run pubs, restaurants, that type of thing. And obviously those types of businesses have been closed down for a good majority of the pandemic. Um, so what they're asking is, will that be reflected in their next year's uh, business insurance, given that they had no claims and the industry basically would have had no claims um, the past year. So would that have an effect on the industry as a whole? Because um, even they're seeing, you know, 50% increases um, and, and, you know, even if they've had no claims in regards to their business insurance. So I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yeah, unfortunately, the increases because of this global correction that's happening right now, I often hear stories of businesses that don't have any claims that are seeing an increase. It's because of that correction happening. Essentially, there's more money paid out in general in a, in a specific sector or in a specific market. And so now that correction is happening for that. But specifically to your question, and I wanted to mention, I love that you're in Western Canada. I was in Western Canada for two years just until recently. Um, so very passionate um, about helping the businesses in, in that part of the country as well. Um, uh, in terms of if you have seen a decrease in your revenue, which unfortunately most businesses have right now, I would call your insurance representative. Um, you could, in fact, lower your premium or depending on the coverage limits you put in place, you might actually be able to get an insurance discount or a refund. Um, so definitely worth calling your insurance representative and asking them those questions. And um, you know, if you wanna know what kind of questions should I be asking or how do I ask them, that's again why we're, our business insurance helpline is there. Yeah, excellent. And I hope to filter as many calls um, through your helpline as well, because I mean, you guys are the experts. You know, we're experts at a lot of things in business resources, um, but we often tap on experts just like your helpline provides um, for, for answers in areas that maybe isn't within our within our natural scope. So that's that's excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, second I question. Want, I want to know, yeah. Hang on, Brendan. I just wonder, just just on that point, Celeste, because that was number four on your list was to update your business interruption uh, limits. For a possible premium refund and i wonder if you could just unpack that a little bit more for people because i suspect that that's something that lots of people will be interested in like what what does that look like how does that how does that work um just unpack that a little bit more for our listeners yeah absolutely so in um when you go to get your insurance um coverage you will be asked a number of questions so you know how many people are typically in your business um you know what's your fire hazard like 
Uh, what is your, you know, estimated revenue? What has your revenue been over the next last number of years? Um, there's questions if you serve alcohol around how much alcohol you're serving, and that all has an impact in it. Same thing with your business insurance um, interruption limits, um, and if you want, you know, liability coverages. If you're shut down and you haven't been taking in revenue, then you're going to have seen a decrease in your revenue. That will impact the price of your premium. And so if you call, that is one factor that could lead to, you know, either an insurance discount or, um, uh, uh, sorry, a, a refund of some sort. Um, and similar, if you are, you know, looking to change um, maybe some of your coverages because you haven't been operating, um, that's all things that you can ask your insurance broker about. And we have heard people do that um, and see um, their insurance premiums adjusted for it. Okay, great. I think that's a really good uh, tip. So I just wanted to make sure people caught that. Um, and Brendan, we'll uh, go back to you because it sounds like you've got some other questions for Celeste. I do, yeah. And thanks, Laura, for highlighting that. That's it's great to have tools right away that members can take with them. That's awesome. Um, this is going to be a fun one, Celeste, because there's a it shows a um, pretty significant disconnect between business insurance providers and current rules and regulations. So what we're hearing from our members is that when they are in touch with their insurance provider or their broker um, is some of the providers out there are refusing to insure those companies who don't mandate their employees to get vaccinated. Um, so they're basically saying is unless you have a vaccination policy in your workplace requiring your employees to be vaccinated, we're not gonna cover you. Now, obviously there's gonna be some discourse in the courts, but what we know, what we believe we know right now is you cannot require your employees to be vaccinated. So do you have any advice for our members, maybe not necessarily on what to do, but how to have that discussion with their insurer? Um, now I'll remind everybody that CFIB does have a vaccination policy, um, which doesn't mandate vaccinations. It, it lightly encourages that and it encourages you to have a discussion with your staff about that. Um, and perhaps this policy can actually help get you coverage if you're being denied. But I was wondering, um, Celeste, if, if you can give our members some talking points with their insurers um, in regards to an area where they don't have the power or ability to, to force their employees to be vaccinated, but they still need that business coverage. Well, I'm so actually happy that you brought this up because I haven't heard of this yet um, through our consumer or you know our business insurance helpline or from our stakeholders. So I took note of it and I would like to make our insurers aware of it at our upcoming commercial line standing committee meeting because I think it's a really um, important point uh, to point out. Some insurers aren't operating in Canada. You know, our, you know, our global insurers, they're operating in Canada, but they're not, you know, headquartered in Canada. Um, so there might be a disconnect between sort of international laws. I think the best advice at the, you know, for the person on the spot is to work with their broker. The broker needs to advocate for them and they need to ask the broker to advocate for them to say, I actually can't put in place things that are not acceptable in Canada. And the broker needs to go back and push on the insurer to do that, especially if the insurer isn't headquartered in Canada. But um, on the broader issue, I would really, really like to bring this back to our commercial insurers and just to flag that this is what we're hearing in the market. And any further context that I can provide after I do that, I'd be happy to send along to you. That's wonderful. Yeah, thanks for that insight. And thanks for raising that on, on behalf of our members as well. That's going to be an important topic, I think, going forward as uh, as it develops in the workplace. I mean, there's a lot up in the air right now, too, in regards to, you know, what we can do in regards to vaccination. So anyways, uh, I very much appreciate that response. Um, and then the last one's also going to be kind of a fun discussion. So to use an example, um, if we have a worker who's in a work vehicle during work hours and they get in a car accident, um, what usually happens is the WCB board and then the car insurance provider will battle out to decide who um, insures the worker's injuries or their time, time lost at work and those wages. Um, what we're seeing, I think, in most provinces is that communicable diseases like COVID-19 are insurable under WorkSafe or WorkSafe WCB claims. So in regards to the crossover of business insurance, um, and then the WCB coverage, how do those um, intermingle? And, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understood that part of the reasoning behind some of the increases in industry is because business insurance providers are, are concerned about the risk level for employees uh, contracting COVID. Um, but when most WCB boards do cover it, how does, that, how does that interconnect and how does that play off of one another? Does that make sense how I explained it? I, I don't know if I'm gonna get this 100% right, but it's another one I can, bring offline or maybe I've misunderstood so you can correct me. Um, so, yeah, WCB is, um, you know, government uh, operated, public, publicly funded. Um, so they would have 
different abilities to offer different sorts of coverages. Um, insurers, for the most part, are um, excluding pandemic-related um, uh, disease from their insurance policies, and this is this is happening typically right around the world, and some of those include communicable diseases. Um, so I, I think I'm missing a piece on how the interplay works. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just adding a little bit more there if I haven't addressed your question. No, uh, that's good. And I think it may have come from my own confusion because I, I, I as I understood it um, from your earlier presentation, I thought that perhaps um, the risk to employees of, of contracting that communicable disease or maybe to customers or clients was helping to drive up the industry rates. And so maybe that was my understanding. My apologies there. So that, that's a good answer. If, if they don't cover things like that under business insurance, then that's that's totally fine. That answers my question. Yes. Okay. Actually, so great, good clarification. Um, when COVID came in, of course, everyone was you know responding very very quickly. So um, some exclusions on uh, diseases like COVID might have been in policies, uh, but in other policies they wouldn't. And we have since seen reinsurers asking people to include exclusions on pandemic on communicable disease. So while the risk was there at the beginning, and you know some provinces did immunity liability, these exclusions are now being added in. Um, just to ensure that you know insurance can remain affordable and and be available um, out there. So there is a specific nuance there um, that probably caused some confusion. My apologies. I might throw in Great. Fred's question here because it's sort of in the same ballpark, um, a little bit of a different um, direction, but same ballpark. Um, Fred's saying we were denied business interruption insurance for COVID-19, um, but his uh, broker has since indicated that there's a class action lawsuit on this matter. And so Fred's curious whether IBC has a position on the class action lawsuit. And I don't know if there's anything you have to say about that, Celeste, but I thought it was an interesting uh, comment. Yeah, I, I usually, you know, when things are before the courts, we we try not to comment. Um, so I can't comment specifically on any class action lawsuit. I will say that, um, you know, for the most part, our understanding is that in insurance policies, it wasn't, you know, explicitly covered for business interruption, um, you know, pandemic-like outbreaks like this. Although some, um, a minority, but some, um, did have it covered. So I think it's all about, you know, what uh, policy was written and how it was written. Um, so that's always something worth exploring, you know, again, with your insurance representative or, or legal counsel. Um, but I don't want to get a, I don't want to make an opinion on what's going to happen before the courts because, uh, you know, that I, I just don't know. Yeah, no, understandable. Um, Corinne, you may have a few more. I'm just going to sneak in one from Marcy because she's been uh, waiting uh, for a little while here on her uh, comment. She's So Marcy's saying um, that she's been told that if the insurance company, not the broker, but the insurance company gets multiple inquiries or requests regarding the same business from different brokers, um, that they might start to see the, the, the view the risk of this business is higher. And she's just curious about whether that's, uh, whether that's the case. So I don't, I don't know whether that affects the way they view it or not, Mar uh, Celeste, um, but, but anything you might uh, say on well, that? I, brokers work very hard, um, you know, for their clients and they like to keep their business. And so, you know, shopping the broker is, is not usually something that, that we like to do because they do work so hard on their on behalf of their clients. But in markets like this, unfortunately, it's necessary. I can't say definitively that an insurer, you know, wouldn't look at this as being a higher risk, but I do think insurers are used to it in this market, seeing multiple requests for quotes coming in. Um, and again, it is completely within your right to speak to different brokers or agents. Um, I think, like I said, there's capacity out there. We're all just working a little bit harder to find it. And one way of doing that is, um, you know, to speak with different insurance brokers if your insurance broker is not able to find you renewal terms. Okay, so that actually answers Jeff's question because he was asking if I already use a broker and they can usually, they're supposed to be shopping around my insurance. Is there much advantage to consulting another broker to do some price shopping? So you're sort of getting at you're sort of implying that, yeah, it could potentially help you out. Is that sort of what you're suggesting? Okay. It, it really depends. Every broker is unique, just like every business is unique. So some brokers have access to maybe two, three, four insurers. Some brokers have access to 20, 25 insurers. So it's a good question to ask them how many insure, insurance carriers they have access to, and specifically right. how many insurance carriers in the commercial space or for your sector, say hospitality, do they have access to? 
because you'll often see the brokers represent you know 300 insurance companies which is great um, but you might be in a niche um, environment and they might have access to less insurers there so really good question to ask your broker is how many insurance um, carriers are you going to go to for my quote is it going to be three is it going to be ten right now because of the hard market you of course want to make sure that you're you know shopping as broad of the market as possible and uh, one way of doing that is speaking to another insurer so just to quickly recap that with an example um, we did um, you know see some some people that said oh no I shopped around I spoke to my broker um, but in the, the market that they were in, maybe it was super niche, the broker did do everything they could for them. They're out there working very hard, but they only had access to three insurance markets. And then they went to a different broker that had access to, say, five different insurance markets, and they were able to secure coverage. So there is an upside, again, if your broker can't do it. I do know I speak to brokers all the time, and they are out there working very, very hard for their clients right now. Uh, but it is just another tool in your toolbox in trying to secure the right quote for you. So I do have a number of questions here too around folks who, um, I'll give you two examples. Sean was talking about after 32 years last December with the same insurance company and no claims, they decided they didn't want to insure us anymore. They gave us three months to find a new insurer. Uh, after a significant amount of work from our insurance broker, we found a company the day before extension expired. Uh, they, they are in B BC. Uh, and this basically has lost trust in a private insurance company. And Chris also similarly sees, can you comment on businesses that have not filed any claims but still get declined insurance after five plus years of a record? And he, that Chris is in manufacturing. So what do you do? Like if you're clean record, you've been with the same insurance company for a long time or whatever reason they drop you. Um, so and do you have any comments on, on that part of it? Yeah. Likely, um, and again, I, not knowing the specifics, um, like what's happening is we did see two large global insurers leave the Canadian market. Um, and so if you are insured with one of those and you go to your broker or agent and say, okay, time for renewal, and they're left, they've essentially said, we're not writing any new business, we're not doing any renewals in this market anymore, then that's sort of why you would feel like you were dropped from your insurer. So it's not so much about you, the business, with 32 years of experience and very little claims history. It's actually about a business decision that was made, you know, somewhere outside of Canada that's now impacting us. So the good news is, is that the other insurers, they will step up, they will respond, you know, capacity comes back into the market, but there is a bit of that transition time. Um, so it sounds like the broker here worked very hard in, in trying to place them um, somewhere, um, but we had heard that happening in the condo sector um, out west. And there were few options to go to once, you know, they went, those insurers left the market. Um, and now we're seeing that there's way more options available to people. The public or the private sector has essentially, you know, corrected and now there's capacity coming back into the market. So I think that's an important, I think that's an important note because especially for those who might be newer in business and haven't seen the hard market cycle before, you know, it can feel pretty scary when your insurance rates are, are going up uh, uh, so dramatically. Yeah, or you can't, can't get insurance at all, right? Like that's just out of the blue. Um, but similar to this though, Mahmoud is asking, um, is it true that there's very little competition in the field of insuring travel and tourism companies? And if so, why? I've got one to just a comment to just add on to that, uh, Corinne, because I'm looking at Heather's comment and she's in the tourism market and she's seen a 325% increase in one year. And that's only covering half of what she used to get um, coverage for. And they've consulted 30 plus insurers and only one respond, responded. And again, she's asking what, you know, what can I do? I'm, suggest I'm, I'm guessing Celeste, you might say, you know, phone the, phone the helpline, your helpline to see if there's anything else that, that, that she could do more specifically, but just to add to Corinne's uh, comment there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I have heard of issues in, um, not so much like the travel agency side, but more if you're, you know, you know, planning trips, say for students or groups of people that are traveling to other jurisdictions. Um, my understanding is, especially if you are planning trips uh, going into the U.S., the U.S. has become even more litigious lately than usual, especially around um, sort of motor vehicle safety. And so I understand that the um, claims in that area have increased significantly. That's not to say, though, that no insurance is available. And as um, uh, the second person mentioned, they did go to 30 plus insurers. So there is competition in the market. Um, but I do think um, that, you know, it's again worth working with your agent or your broker to really show sort of what risk management strategy you have in place, um, especially 
traveling to the U.S. where it is more litigious. But that, as you mentioned, Laura, is something that our business insurance helpline can definitely help with more once they have the specific details of the case. Okay. Um, lots of comments about cost. Um, you know, not surprisingly, that's why we're having this this uh, this webinar. And um, so, um, I do have one uh, sort of suggestion here from Betty. Uh, is there some way they can find a list of insurance companies available in a specific sector? And is this list available from you or from somewhere? So the list is available at, there's a um, insurance publication called the Canadian Underwriter. And so the Canadian Underwriter does a marketer um, publication every single year. And we can share with the CFIB, we can share a link. But yes, it will say, you know, for bars, here's who to go to. For travel agencies, here's who to go to. Um, so we can certainly provide that link. And often if you call our business insurance helpline, um, they'll provide you with some of that information as well and might be able to provide you with a little bit more insight into what is on the list. And I'll just mention that Paul is an insurance broker and I think he was responding to some of Brendan's comments around um, some insurance companies asking for vaccine policies. And he said he's actually never heard about that. So it's probably something that's maybe unique to some circumstances that maybe some of our members have heard, but uh, Paul is uh, sort of backing you up a little bit, Celeste, and saying that as a broker, he's not heard that before. Yes, Just definitely. Good. That. And thanks for the, uh, thanks for the backup. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll add one more in, Corinne, maybe um, go to you for, for another one, and then we'll, um, we'll wrap up. Um, sure. Colin was just commenting that you've spoken of support for the restaurant industry. That was the example you used, so I think that's what she's referring to. Um, but what about the salon um, industry? And I'm guessing that through your helpline, you've got lots of you've got lots of different examples and lots of different um, people with different um, expertise. But anything you want to say about the salon industry? Yeah, so our risk manager has helped. I, I, I did use the example of restaurants um, a few times. Uh, apologies, I might just be excited that we can go to a restaurant here on Friday. Uh, perhaps it's top of mind. Um, and I'm very excited to go to a salon, so that should be top of mind as well. But um, we, our risk manager has helped um, a number of different businesses from hotels to greenhouses to um, uh, you know, pubs, event halls, that sort of thing. We haven't received a lot of calls from salons, to be honest, um, because we do track sort of by sector where they come from. Um, but if there are issues that, um, you know, any salons are facing and as they reopen, looking to make sure they have that right insurance coverage in place, do call. Um, we're happy to support. And, and again, our risk manager can help a variety or risk managers can help a variety of businesses. That's great. So I think that's a good clarification for everyone that you were using restaurants as an example, but you can help lots of different uh, sectors is, is the point there. Um, Corinne, are there last questions you want to throw in? Yeah, there's a couple. One I think is she's just looking for clarification. I'm not sure if you can help, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. So Megan is saying that they've been closed uh, for restoration due to a sewer backup in their building where they're a tenant. They have business interruption insurance, but they're closed, but they were closed last year during the same time period. Uh, the insurance company wants to go back a few years and take an average, including last year of the sales over four years. Is this industry standard or what can we expect or suggest? Is that something you can answer? I do think that it's pretty uh, standard to um, look at an average of business um, sales revenue um, over a number of years uh, to pay out that business interruption claim. Um, but it, again, if you have specifics, the, our, the, the folks that you'd speak to on our helpline would be able to um, give you kind of exactly what questions to ask them or what to push back on. Um, but from my understanding, that seems uh, like a standard. Okay, and then a quick follow-up to the question around uh, insurance companies by sector list. Peter is asking, is there a list of brokers who specialize in certain industries? Is that something that's available somewhere? I'm sure there is. Um, we have, so I represent the insurance company side, but there are provincial brokers associations right across the country. So, um, and a uh, Canadian one insurance broker association of Canada. I suspect that through their websites that they would have a list of, um, you know, brokers um, in specific sectors. I wouldn't be able to say that for certain, but I can certainly follow up with you guys at CFIB and uh, confirm. Yes, so that's uh, good Good advice is trying the insurance brokers associations provincially to see if they have that information. So there you go, Peter. Or sorry, that was Paul. Oh no, that was Peter, my apologies. <laughs> 
Um, all right, lots more questions, but I know we want to uh, move on here. So I'll go back to you, Laura, to see if there's anything yeah, else. I think it's it's that time in the webinar where we start where we start wrapping up, and so um, I uh, will give Celeste you a, a word. And uh, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to you on behalf of uh, members for coming and and. Um, and call the helpline. It sounds like a great uh, helpline. It sounds like it's resourced by um, passionate uh, people who care a lot about your business. And so I'm um, calling that insurance helpline. I, I give it a try and then let us know how it goes. And we'll obviously share that information with other members. But big thank you to you, Celeste. And I'll let you um, make a couple of comments and then I'll go to Corinne and then I'll bring us home as usual. Yes, thank you, uh, Laura. Thank you, Corinne. And thank you to everybody joining us here today. I think I see over 300 people on the line. I'm so uh, happy that you were able to, to join. And I do hope these resources have been helpful. Um, as we do look ahead um, to reopening, I am hoping that you know we're seeing that light at the end of the tunnel. I'm hoping the quote that we saw at the beginning, this too shall pass. I hope we're at the pass part um, of that. And in the meantime, if there's anything that IBC can do, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time or use our resources. That's what they're there for, and we're so happy to share them here with you today. Well, thanks so much, Celeste, and, and thank you again for, for joining us. Corinne, um, thoughts as we wrap up for another week? Uh, <laughs> thanks again for joining us. We hope this information was useful. Um, we will be um, continuing these webinars and continuing to provide information. Um, I know things are starting to improve, but they're still pretty tough for many of you. And so please know that we're still here trying to push for things that are going to make it a little bit easier as we go forward. Um, we do have some pretty exciting uh, webinars upcoming. One sneak peek possibility, not 100% certain, but close, is we may have the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, our Minister of Finance, Christian Freeland, on a webinar very soon. So watch out for that one. We are uh, just finalizing that. So I think that could be a very interesting one as well. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll continue to provide updates on everything that we can. But in the meantime, please stay strong and please use our resources and our counselors and please respond to our surveys um, because they're invaluable to us as uh, we do our work. So thanks again for joining. Thanks, Corinne. And I'll just come in behind the um, behind uh, Corinne and Celeste. Um, and uh, I, I also, uh, the quote that I liked from this week is you can't calm the storm, but you can calm yourself. So that's true of the COVID storm and the insurance storm that we uh, seem to be in. Um, and we are getting through this, so um, it's great to see the, the every province now with the reopening plan, uh, great to see the cases uh, falling, the hospitalizations falling. Um, so, you know, things are getting better and I think we're all feeling that. I know some businesses, depending on what business you're in and what part of the country you're in, it can feel a little further away, um, but uh, certainly things are getting better. So it's nice to be ending on a more optimistic note. However, we also know that after the storm, there's a lot of cleanup to do and many of you have a lot of debt. Uh, to deal with and are still, you know, just just getting in through reopening is its own um, its own challenge. So as Corinne said, we'll continue to be here and we will um, call our helpline, call the insurance helpline. Uh, lots of people here to support you as we um, get through the next phase of all of this. And with that, we'll call it a webinar and we hope to see you again. And um, thank you very much, everyone. And with that, we'll end the webinar. <laughs>